Uh, my name is Monica. Um, I'm from LA for the most part, and I've split my childhood between LA and in Taiwan. Um, I'm the marketing director for Popular Demand. I've been here since six months after the brand launched. Um, so I've been here for a while now. I've been here for like five years. Streetwear is, it depends on your perspective, I guess, but it's kind of, to me, it's the, con the convergence of street fashion and also it has roots in like urban wear, hip hop culture and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's basically what people wear on the street, you know, it's like a part of youth culture. It's not high fashion, you know, although people mix it with high fashion, it's kind of its own kind of entity. And I really think it has become a bigger and bigger industry as years have gone by. In the past 20 years, I think streetwear has really blown up to the point where you can buy streetwear in major retailers now. You know, I think 10, 15 years ago, it, it was very hard to get streetwear. And that was like kind of the root of it, the discovery and people wanting to wear stuff that other people couldn't get a hold of. And that's why it ties in so closely with like sneaker culture and sneaker collecting. My mom was the one who really got me into streetwear and she would really keep up with it all the time. She showed me like Bape and CDG and all that kind of stuff, which is crazy because people are like, wow, your mom is so cool. She really is cool. I think sometimes she knows a lot more about this stuff in earlier than I do sometimes and she keeps me in the loop sometimes. I always knew I wanted to be in streetwear. I just didn't know how I would be a part of it yet. So I started out doing the streetwear vlog and that's kind of how I met different people and I went to like Agenda and like I was kind of getting my feet wet and you know getting to know what the industry was like and the more I saw that there were different opportunities in the industry the more excited I was about it because I was at first you know it's just like a hobby it's like an interest then you realize hey some people actually make money doing this stuff as a marketing director you know my job is to continuously like keep basically keep the brand relevant um, whether it's through PR or product placement or working with different people um, and there's a lot of strategic relationship building um, where you know we've kind of amassed this really crazy network over the last five years whether it's someone in you know the liquor industry or nightlife or models and music artists and all that kind of stuff I, I went to tons of events I went to tons of video shoots and um, people would ask like oh how did you guys get in so many music videos and TV shows and, and on so many people I would go on Twitter and on Instagram and rappers always post if they have a video shoot coming up they can't shut up about it so I would type it in, I would type in like video shoot or like whatever and I figure out when people are having video shoots and then I would hit them up and say, hey, do you need wardrobe styling? I'll come help you. I would show, they, they would pretty much always hit me back. I would show up with a steamer, you know, and help them steam their clothes, give them their second opinion on putting their wardrobes together and I would bring some popular man stuff. I was never like, hey, here's popular man, put this shit on. You know, cause, cause they would be like, nobody likes being told what to wear. So I never did that to anyone. And I would be at video shoots for hours and like literally helping people put, you know, their outfits together and steaming their clothes and making sure everything looks good. And then they, I would just hang up Papa Man t-shirts too. And they would say, hey, I like this. And I'll be like, yeah, this goes with that. And they'll be like, well, does this, and you know, I would just give my honest opinion. So, you know, every day I am in constant contact with different people. Um, I have, I schedule different office appointments for music artists and influencers and things like that to come by the office. Um, you know, we talk about potential project, projects that we can work on. We talk about potential collaborations or events that we can do. This is not really just like a nine to five, you know, and I think a lot of people dream about oh, I don't want the nine to five life. I want to do my own thing or I want to do something that I love doing. And I love my job, but it's not a nine to five, you know, it's a 24 seven. So when you leave the office, as long as you have like your phone or your, a connection, your, job, your office is going with you everywhere. And you know, you're gonna have to sacrifice like family time or just hanging out time or if you have a significant other, you're not going to be able to hang out with them as much. And all of those things are things that you need to keep in mind if 
this is the type of life that you want. Streetwear has gone through a lot of different shifts and changes because people, you know, I think social media is a big part of this, but people don't like to wear the same outfits twice because if you, if, you know, if I'm wearing this, I'm probably not gonna wear this. Yeah, I'm gonna like take a picture in it, post on Instagram, and I'm not gonna wear it it again for a long time, you know, at least, or at least not in the same configuration. Like I might, I, I might wear it with like different shoes or whatever, but because of that, everyone just wants the look and they don't care as much about quality. There are still people who care a lot about quality and rarity and things like that. But for the most part, they don't care about that as much anymore. So it's important to know kind of what the, what the climate is in the industry right now and people want pretty much fast fashion you know so i think a lot of people in the industry have had to adjust to you know maybe getting carried in different retailers or switching up kind of their looks so that it's more wearable with different pieces it is hard to be a woman in the industry and i would hope that you know with people like myself and different people who have pioneered the way whether you're a woman or not you know, to make it a better environment for women and to empower those around you to become, you know, insp other, more inspiring women. You have to be very aware and you have to navigate things in a smart way. You know, you have to worry about your own safety, obviously, and you have to know that you don't have to give up your integrity for anyone, for anything. You know, if people are pressuring you for whatever, like there will people, there will be people who come at you and they pretend like they want to do business, but then they turn around and they like throw in that they want to take you to dinner and like, it's okay to say no. Like those are the types of people you don't want to do business with anyway. That's happened to many women that I'm friends with or that I know in the industry where they're under, they're coming in under the assumption that someone wants to do business with them but then it turns into this whole weird flirty thing or sexual advances and like that's the reality of it and I think a lot of people don't like to talk about that. So the less people talk about it, the less awareness is, it, there is and the more people are willing to just sweep it under the rug and I've come across different situations like that where people will be like, oh no, they're just being friendly or oh no, you know, you have to just be mindful of that. And if you're a guy, like, please don't do that to women. You know, sometimes girls really do just want to do business and they're just here to work. Eyeless is specifically for young women, you know, and I really want to use that as a platform to, you know, uplift other women who are inspirational, who have carved out, carved out success for themselves. Um, so I think that's the, the main difference. You should be able to wear different things just like you have bags and shoes and things like that. It's an accessory. So I think it's really important to be able to have that but not also not, you know, spend all your money on just one pair of glasses. And girls break their glasses all the time. They lose it. Their friends steal them. So that's kind of like the root of it. It'll serve as a platform and kind of living example to show other young people, you know, young women specifically, that you should just go for it. You know, you should, if you have a passion, you should take that passion and turn it into something that you can do every day. And that's what, that was kind of the driving force behind it. I always tell people who come into the industry young, like, don't always play off of the fact that you're young. You being young is not really like a selling point in the long run. You're not always gonna, there's always gonna be someone younger than you. And when you think, when you have that mentality like, oh, I'm really young, blah, 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 you kind of give yourself a cushion to fall back on and say, hey, I'm only 19, I got time, don't worry. Then before you know it, you're 27 and you're like, oh, I don't have that cushion anymore really because I'm 27, you know? So don't play off of the age thing too much, I would say. I would definitely just do what you do and be the best at what you can do and continue to improve. Don't bank on your age. And it also vice versa, if you're 27, 28, I don't know, 45, don't think that like, oh, this is too late for me, you know, like, don't ever think that way. Just don't let age limit you or give you this false perception of you have more time or you don't have enough time. Like, just do it.